Hi everyone and welcome to another Camera Jabber video. Today I'm speaking to Terry Donnelly who is a fantastic photographer who has got some amazing shots of some red squirrels in his garden. Hi Terry, how are you? Hi Angela, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. You, have you seen many squirrels recently? I have, I've seen one this morning. We've had a beautiful baby red squirrel running around the garden so um, oh. yeah. Lovely. Now you're lucky because you obviously got a, a red squirrel reserve not too far away from you, but um, you know, we quite often see grey squirrels here. So I guess this is something that a lot of people could try photographing. Absolutely. Um, we, we're very fortunate, as you mentioned, with having the, um, the Formby National Trust probably less than a mile away from, from where I live. So we do get the, the red squirrels dropping in the garden occasionally. So um, very, very fortunate, but there's a lot of, of wildlife in your garden. And it's a great time at the moment, even, you know, on Facebook, when I'm chatting to people, people are putting much more pictures of what's going on in the garden with, with birds, with blue tits, um, all different types of birds, what they're seeing, and they never, ever usually notice. So it's, it's a great time to get out in the garden and enjoy the, the wildlife, which, which we'd normally probably never even give a second, uh, second thought to. Yeah, well, I guess a lot of people are away, you know, out working in the offices and things, whereas now they're more likely to see some of the wildlife. Um, you know, that's, that's uh, in their garden, maybe, or, you know, they don't realise it's in the garden all day, or maybe first thing in the morning, last thing at night. But um, you didn't just kind of start photographing the squirrels, you spent a little time investigating how they moved, didn't you? I did do, Angela. I mean, the, the house, what we live in now, I've, I've lived here for about three years. And when we first moved in, I could see the red squirrels, and they'd be in the trees at the bottom of the garden, very high up and they'd be in transit, moving around, they'd be jumping about, chasing each other. And I struggled getting a decent photograph of them because they're so far away. And they'd always be, you know, uh, partly hidden by tree, uh, the, the branches or leaves. So I wanted to bring them down. So I did put initially some feeder boxes up at the bottom of the garden, which were quite popular. But again, I couldn't quite get that shot. Mm -hmm. But I noticed very early on, they were quite... Um, they were quite fond of, of a big clay feeder, which I had at the bottom of the garden. So I started putting some fresh hazelnuts in there for them, um, which they were visiting quite regularly. And then I thought, well, let's see how this goes. So I started moving the, the, the clay pot up the garden a couple of inches each day, just to see if I could encourage them further to an area where I could get a good photograph. Um, and that's the way it went, really. And I brought the feeder up and then... I put a couple of pieces of 2 by 2 up with a feeder. And again, they started quite happily feeding from there as well. So it was a case of moving those items around the garden and just getting the confidence of them to, to come further towards the house, knowing that you know that they're not at risk from us. Um, and then slowly changing the apparatus to encourage them to jump. Right. Did it, did it take long from you sort of initially starting to tempt them in to getting to the point where you set up something... Um, for them to jump? Only about a year. Oh, right. <laughs> so there's yeah, quite a bit of work involved. Yeah, it, it, it took a long time because it was, mm. um, it was a case of doing things very slowly and sometimes things didn't work. And one mm -hmm. thing with nature is you, you can't make nature do what it doesn't want to do. You, it, yeah, you go that's very true. Nature. Mm -hmm. um, and I learned very early on that, you, you know, if, if, if I would have walked down to the bottom of the garden to take a picture, well, they just move on. And you can't chase nature. You've got to bring nature to you. And mm -hmm. I think that's the key, really. It's patience and um, lots of it in, in this case. And I guess also at that time, you were fitting this around lots of other jobs, whereas uh, people at the moment probably got a little bit more time to dedicate to this kind of thing. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it was, um, it was a, a, a job first thing in the morning, uh, lunch, lunch time, and then perhaps um, early evening. But now, of course, we've got so much more time to investigate and, and see what's going on. Could we have a look at some images of your setup and, of course, of your, your, your results? I can show you how I actually built the apparatus and what I started with and how that progressed. So, yeah, absolutely. These are random pictures of uh, the squirrels in the garden. And basically what I started with, um, let me find for you. This was one of the setups which I started with. <laughs> And I've actually just put some 2B2 pieces of wood into the ground and I've got the feeder box on one of them. And you can see the squirrel just sitting up on top of the, the feeder box there. Yeah. Uh, so I actually started placing 
some hazelnuts on top of the, the other pieces of wood just to encourage the squirrel across because he can see them from where he's situated. So what would happen was he would start to run up to investigate what was going on. Mm -hmm. He'd start taking the nuts. So then this progressed on to It would be a jump. He'd, he'd jump across from one to the other. Now, there's four pieces of wood there, Angela, and that, that was done purposely for a reason, as you'll see as, as we progress through some of the pictures. So what would happen is, let me just... So these it. photos are answering one of the questions I had. You, the hazelnuts are still in their shells. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the hazelnuts are by... They, they, come, they come in fresh from Poland. Um, so they're totally raw hazelnuts, um, mm -hmm. and they're the highest quality ones which you can find. So what happens is that this video footage is a little bit grainy because it's from a it's from a trail cam, mm -hmm. which, which I used in the garden just to to learn the behaviour of the squirrels. So this is typically what they'll do: they'll just nip up, enjoy the nuts. <laughs> and very cleverly, he he hopped across. He's got a hazelnut in his mouth, and he's knocked the hazelnuts off the other one onto the floor which he'd then collect and he's, he's scampered off on the left-hand yeah. side. So he'll, he'll run off and he'll bury that now. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the behaviour which I encouraged them to do. There we go. And then I progressed that on and I put some wood across two of the pieces of a 2B2, so mm -hmm. it's like a frame. And on this one, you can see I've got a sliding piece of wood and I've just got a couple of cable ties keeping that in place. And I could extend that wood or move it away just to increase or decrease the, the, the size of the jump just so they were more comfortable in what they were doing. That's a clever idea. Yeah, it was just, it was just a big learning curve, really, of, of mm -hmm. seeing what they like to do and what they were comfortable with. Um, so in this little video clip, and again, it's a little bit grainy because it's quite early in the morning and it's from uh, one of those trail cams. But we've got Bobby on the, on the left-hand side of the frame. And on the right-hand side, you can see, again, I've completed the framework, but I've put two buckets on there, which are actually upside down at the moment. And that's basically to stop the squirrel running up the piece of wood. Um, because oh, he runs up the wood, he, he goes inside, the, he ends up inside the buckets, he can't get out onto the top. So that means he's got to go onto the other frame and jump across. I see. So those buckets are on top of posts. They're not sort of on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's on top of posts. Because otherwise, he'd take the easiest route available and he, he just wouldn't bother <laughs> jumping. So there he goes. And he's going to have a little look around, take a jump. And he'll collect his hazelnuts off the end and away he goes. So fast, that jump. Oh, the really, really, really quick. There he goes. He's having a having a bit of a feed. <laughs> so that one's called Bobby. And we know he's, he's Bobby because we can identify him from his tail. He's got a, it's very dark, isn't it? Yeah, he, he's, he's quite a dark uh, squirrel, this one. Mm. But he's got a little bit of damage on his tail end. Oh. So he's quite easy to identify Bobby. So let me bring you back to the grid. And that's probably an easier way for you to see the setup. So oh, that makes it very clear. Posts, yeah, the four posts, and I've got um, pieces of wood along the top making a frame. The lead two posts have got the upside down buckets, and they're just basically so the squirrel cannot run up the post onto the top and retrieve the hazelnuts. Because if he runs up, he just ends up inside the bucket. So he has to go to the other yeah. side and jump across. He's got to earn his food. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that, that, that's basically the setup. And this is a picture of Bobby again. <laughs> and you can see at the bottom of the frame the pieces of wood, and you can see the, the hazelnuts, what he's jumping for. Mm -hmm. So, it's, it's surprising when you see them jump quick. And it's not even as. They don't even look like they've jumped. They're, they're, they're literally throwing themselves through the air. Um, but when you freeze the action, it's a very, very graceful um, jump what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And you can 
the concentration on the face, you can just see they're totally focused on where they're going to. And each jump is slightly different. And you can see that if, when they're in their air, the air as well, you can see that the tail will flick about sometimes if they're going slightly off target and the tail flicks them back to bring them back into, uh, into oh, line. Right. That's interesting. And what yeah. camera are you using for this, Terry? Uh, the, there's only one camera I consider using for this is, is the Sony A9 mm -hmm. because that will fire at 20 frames a second. 20 so, frames a second, right. Again, yeah, full frame, of course, as well. Yeah, yeah. So what I have to do, because they're moving so quick, the autofocus is very, very hit and miss because they're just so quick. They, they really mm. are. I've had some success with the autofocus, but 95% of the time I'll shoot these on manual focus. Right. And I'll go for a midpoint in the jump and I'll put a bit of wood there, a marker, and then I'll set my focus to that point. Um, and then it's just a case really of sitting and waiting for the squirrel to come. When he's about to jump, I release the shutter, have the camera firing and the squirrel will jump and he'll come through the, the um, the area where he's in focus as he's as done in this instance mm -hmm. um, and that's the frame which I'll, I'll use from the sequence right so you obviously you'll have some shots before that so the squirrel's out of focus and they come into focus and then perhaps the hind legs might be in focus absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. so they just I just wait I mean ideally I want the eyes and I want the, the front paws actually yes. in the focal plane yeah so I want them to be nice and crisp and sharp um but we've got a do few you have examples. camera in silent shooting, or do oh, you yeah. not worry about it? Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's the other added bonus of shooting the A9 as well. It's um, I, I shoot it on silent shutter, so there's absolutely no sound whatsoever. Because wildlife is very skittish. Hmm. You, you know, even when I'm in my office now, if there's something outside the window, I can literally just tap something on my desk and it'll run. Yeah. So you do need to be completely silent with um, when working with wildlife. So that's, yeah, uh, 20 frames a second, totally silent uh, shutter, and two brilliant um, innovations in, in the camera, which makes it work. Yeah, and they're fantastic shots, but like, um, it's the preparation, really, that gets you them, so you're, they're in the right position for you, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. It's um, all nature photography. I mean, anybody can probably just come along and press the shutter once it's all set up. But it's all that preparation and it's all the groundwork and it takes up takes a lot of time to do it. It really does. Yeah. And um obviously you you're considering your background as well when you're setting it up. So you've got there, you've got a nice sort of deep green background. Yeah. Well, I'm shooting with the four hundred millimeter um G Master, the, the Sony. Mm -hmm. So I do get a nice um blurred background and good subject separation from using that lens. Um but you do have to just pick your position as well. Maybe move the camera slightly to the left or the right, just to try and pick out a bit of the background, which is going to be uh, the best. And, and that changes as well, seasonal, because some of the, the greenery loses its leaves. I do have a story, actually. Um, the chap at the back, his house just seemed to be growing day by day um, last year. And I was looking and I was going, as you painted that house a different colour because it just it just looks huge everywhere I look and see in this house. So the guy actually knocked on my door and he said, you might have no noticed that my house is growing in your garden. I said, I have, yeah. He said, we've had to cut a lot, a lot of the, the shrubs down at the bottom along the border. He said, I've planted mm. some new ones. They're going to take a little while to grow. But apparently a tree had died or something, so he had to cut it down. Oh, I see. So it made but a thought, difference to your photography. I thought I was losing my mind. It was just this house. <laughs> it's appearing. But yeah, you're quite right. You, you do have to lock your... your I, I think a background in a, in a photograph is just as important as, as the subject matter. And you have to pay that due consideration um, at all times. I agree. And um, what about shutter speed? Because obviously these things are moving incredibly quickly. What sort of shutter speed do you need to freeze them? As fast as you can get, really. But that's dependent, on, again, on the light. Hmm. I do like to... I mean, this, this particular image is shot at f4, and I do like to, to stop the aperture down slightly just to get it an increased depth of field. Yeah. Um, but the consequence of that is that, I mean, we live in England, and we don't get an awful lot of light anyway. So it's a balancing act 
as with everything. So I certainly don't want to shoot below one to sixteen hundredth of a second, um, but I would like to get two thousand five hundredth of a second wherever I can. Because yeah. they literally they're, they're moving so quick. Yeah. And um, do you ever use flash? Do you know, Angela, it's, it'd be great if I could use flash, but I, I just can't. I did try, and I only did it once. I, I used a couple of speed lights set very far back from the, the, the actual jump, and I diffused them as well. Um, but as soon as they just flashed slightly, uh, the squirrels just, do, you could see they were totally put off by it, so I didn't use them again. Yeah. But I have... I have used um, a couple of rotor lights on continuous light mode when it's been really, really dark and, and a couple of rain shots and, and they've, they've lifted the squirrels up for me. Okay. So which rotor lights do you use? Is it AOS or you yeah, an Pro? I, I used a pair of AOS on, on the squirrels. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of like the mid range. You've got the Neo 2s, then you've got the AOS and then you've got the Innova Pros. Yeah. I mean, the great thing with the AOS, I love the AOS because it, it's a good size. It's a manageable size. It's mm -hmm. got a kicker power out of it as well. Um, and they're just, they're just easier. I mean, the Innova Pro 2 is, is the more powerful lights, as you know. Um, but it's, it's bigger and it's, 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 I, I feel it's just more awkward to use. I, I, I suppose it's partly a personal thing, but I, I just get more out of the AOS. I and do you, that sorry, do, do you use it battery powered or uh, do you connect it to the mains when you're using it outside? Yeah, I'd use it battery powered. Right. Okay. Yeah, I use it on the battery. It's, yeah. um, especially so when it's, it's nice raining. and contained. Then you could just put a bag over it to keep protect it from any rain, can't you? And yeah, I just I, I I just use a a plastic bag and just pop it over the top just to keep the the wet off the light. Yeah, and that works really really well. Great. Okay, and it doesn't worry the squirrels when it's continuous, unlike the flash. No, no. I mean, with. With wildlife, I think it's anything for changes that they don't like. So flash is a, you know, something that it's a change in the light. Suddenly they don't know what it is. But if yeah. something, if a light is on or there's an object there, that's there when they enter the area, that doesn't seem to bother them too much. So Great. this one I, I shot yeah. in the early morning light. This was about probably 5.30 in the morning. This was last yeah. week. Yeah. So the sun was just creeping up. And changes in the sunlight, you know, you, you, you can get completely different types of pictures. You can see the way it's popping through the uh, the branches of the trees at the bottom of the garden. And yeah, we just it's get some, yeah, some bokeh coming through, and we get the edge light around the squirrel. So there's just different types of shots what you can get if you just um, experiment. But people can do this with birds as well. There's a lot they be, they can be doing. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is um, this particular setting. It's just a it's just a trestle table. And I've put some logs on there and um, a little bit of fish screen, a little bit of DPC, the plastic, what the builders use. And right. I've just put a bit of water in there as well, so it becomes almost like a little bit of a pond. So they like coming and, and drinking out of that. Mm -hmm. But you can just get yourself some nice little shots that way as well. Yeah, and I know a lot of people. natural, doesn't it? Yeah. A lot of people at the moment are building little, um, little ponds out of, uh, you know, the seed grower trees. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just using them for the small birds, and they're getting some fantastic results. And tip. again, that's just another really light one. Mm -hmm. I, I always try and pick out, if I can, just an angle or something that's a little bit different. Mm. Um, so I've got one of... There we go. Ah, yes. So really so use that reflection. That. Yeah. So there's a lot you can do with your garden. Mm. And I've, I've got a reasonable size garden, but even I've got friends who have got quite small gardens, really, but they're still getting fantastic results. And um, there's a lot out there. There's an awful lot of nature that just will drop in. Yeah. If you put a bit of food out for them, leave it for a few days, don't try and photograph, just let them get used mm -hmm. to coming up with the food and then progress on with your camera. And some wildlife in more urban areas is a bit braver. I know, you know grey squirrels tend to be quite bold, don't they? Um, I was in a yeah. park just before the lockdown and a fox just came out from under a hedge and, and was kind of watching me and I got a few shots. So you know, it's obviously quite used to people. Yeah. I've got a friend actually who's got regular foxes coming to her garden 
And she gets some fantastic pictures of them. She really does. Well, yeah, the, the, sorry. You're quite right. There the is an awful lot of nature about at the minute. Mm. <laughs> That's great. And I guess, um, say, in urban areas where people have got fences that divide the gardens, the squirrels often take a particular route. So again, you know, using the observation that you mentioned, you could notice, okay, a squirrel regularly runs along that fence. If you set up your camera ready for it, or even put, you know, a few hazelnuts up to kind of interrupt its flow so it might stop and eat them, you could get some great shots. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, are, they are creatures of habit. They do like to take the same route and to do the same mm -hmm. things. Um, but you're quite right. What I did, Angela, actually, I bought a, a trail cam, which is a, a garden camera, which runs on batteries. Mm -hmm. Activates on um, on movements and some of the video clips I showed earlier are actually from that unit, and it wasn't expensive. You know, it was about fifty pound on Amazon, and it was That's great amazing. for learning the behaviour because it's got a time and date on there. You put your six AA batteries in, set it up, and leave it for a few days, and you can go out and you can see what time the wildlife is coming, what route they take, and it saves you a lot of time. So that that was really useful for me. That yeah, that's a really really good tip. This is one of my favourite pictures. This is Bobby. Yeah, that is a and, great shot. And again, you can see his, his poor damaged mm -hmm. tail there. Mm. But this one, you know, Angela, I, I entered this in the British Photography Awards. Mm -hmm. And he was shortlisted in the land animals section. And I did have a chuckle because he was shortlisted against uh, tigers from India. <laughs> bears from the Arctic. <laughs> And it was yeah. a whole list of um, exotic animals in, in these faraway places. And, and Bobby was sat in the, the centre of them all in, the, in my back garden. Looking so a bit it, nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it, it just demonstrates, though, you know, it, it, it's about the photography. That's what's important, thinking it through and seeing, you know, the opportunity and getting some great pictures. Absolutely, 100%. And probably the, the other one I'd like to show you... This is, a, this is a new visitor to the garden, this one. This one we've, we've called Dolly. Oh, she's um, a lovely colour. Yeah, she's beautiful. And she's got quite small tufts on the ears, so I think it might be quite a young squirrel, this one. Uh -huh. uh, but this one is a new visitor. It's been coming for about four or five weeks now. Mm -hmm. um, but again, she's got beautiful quality about yeah. her. We've been in there. Um, she does look like a, quite a young one, as you say, a little baby. Very cute. Yeah, yeah. So quite excited over this one, but hopefully it'll continue to to visit quite regular, and um, and we get to, to know this one quite well and a lot more photographs as well. Yeah, well, look, I'm going to keep an eye on your uh, Instagram and your posting because I'm looking forward to seeing some more pictures. Well, everybody loves a red squirrel, Angela. Yeah, it's um, it's a native squirrel to, to the UK. And, you know, we had, we had a lot of success with these last year. We, we had the big feature in the Daily Mail. Mm -hmm. uh, the BBC came out and did a video segment for us that went out on the uh, 6 o'clock news and the 9 o'clock news. And we even shared, uh, Bobby even shared the BBC homepage website, uh, not the regional one, but the, the main homes page with yeah. uh, Boris Johnson. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was Boris and then there was Bobby next to him. On the on the on the homepage, so that was that was quite something, really. Oh, well done, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, so thank you very much for sharing your uh, your technique and your pictures with us. It's really useful, and I hope uh, that people will give, um, give give some wildlife photography a try during the lockdown. Absolutely, give it a go, and it's it's very rewarding as well. It's um, because wildlife can be quite small especially with the songbirds once you get a, a good high resolution image of them and you see that on your screen um you appreciate them so much more and you know it's it, it's a great activity and particularly now as, as you quite rightly say when we're stuck at home it's something people should make the most of great okay well thanks very much terry you're welcome angela always lovely to speak to you thank you Bye bye